Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. All right, welcome. Yes, welcome back, advanced students, for advanced class 39. I'd like to start off with a bit of a history lesson today. Do you like history? Yeah? Do you? Do you like history? I do. It's interesting. It's interesting. And yes, and yesterday we talked a little bit about... I talked about Rome. I talked about... Well, I didn't mention Babylon or the death of Augustus. But I did mention the... I mentioned the, the crucifixion of Jesus. I was, I was talking about dates. Dates. And when we use B.C. and A.D. Antes de Cristo. Se dice before Christ. Or B.C. Mientras que después de Cristo. Se dice ano domini. Not English. Not English at all. But I suppose Latin. In the year of our Lord. Or A.D. A.D. So let's talk about some history here. Rome was founded in the year 753 BC. It's interesting with years. We don't we don't normally we don't say 753. Yeah. 753 BC. Jerusalem was destroyed in the year 587 BC. Babylon was taken by the Jews in the year 538 BC. The death of Socrates took place in 466 BC. B.C. I mentioned yesterday the Chinese invented paper in the year 116 B.C. Yeah, Caesar landed in Britain in the year 55 B.C. Caesar was killed in the year 44 B.C. The death of Augustus, 14 A.D. Jesus Christ crucified, 33 A.D. Claudius visited Britain, the year 43 AD. Uh, horseshoes. They started making horseshoes. Horseshoes, yes. Horseshoes. So those nice shoes for horses. Horseshoes. Out of iron in the year 481 AD. And now, Latin. The Latin language or the Latin tongue ceased to be spoken in the year 586 A.D. Yeah. And uh, glass. The English started making glass in the year 663 A.D. So there you go, glass. Um, oh, back in 135, the Romans destroyed uh, 580,000 Jews and banished the rest from Judea in the year 135. A.D. There you go. Bit of history today on Baogan Inglés 4.0. A little bit of history for you. Now it's time because you'd better get used to practicing grammar because we are going to practice it. I am used to practicing grammar. I'm used to speaking. I'm used to speaking English. I'm not used to speaking Spanish. When I came here, it took me a long time to get used to speaking Spanish. It took me a long time to get used to hearing Spanish. Okay, before we can be used to something, we have to get used to it. We have to go through the temporary transition period of getting used to something. It took me, it took me six months to get used to Spanish music. It took me three days to get used to Spanish food because I loved it and I love it now. It didn't take me long at all to get used to Spanish food. I'm used to it. I'm used to it now. People say, but Kyle, when you were in Canada, you probably ate dinner at 5 o'clock. And yes, I did. When I was in Canada, I used to eat. And there's the other form of used to. Used to plus infinitive. Past form. I used to eat dinner at 5 o'clock. Or, or maybe 5.30 or maybe 6. But then I came to Spain. And I had to get used to eating dinner much later. But I'm used to it. It took me, it took me a few months to get used to eating dinner late. But I'm used to it now. 
I am used to eating dinner late. I'm used to it, but when I go home to Canada, I, I eat dinner at the Canadian time, and it doesn't take me long to get used to, to uh, eating dinner early again. I, th- I think you, you typically get used to your surroundings. And if people are eating dinner, well, I'll eat dinner too. And I get used to it. And within a few days, I'm back on Canadian time. I think you'll find the same thing if you ever go to North America. Or, well, go <laughs> outside of Spain, I suppose, where they eat earlier. You will get used to the earlier time. It doesn't seem that strange once you get used to it. We can say, it takes some getting used to. It takes some getting used to. means it it requires some time to become accustomed to it. My students always understand accustomed to because it sounds so much like the Spanish, acostumbrado a. But um, used to, it means the same thing, but it's used ten times more often than accustomed to. Accustomed to sounds very formal. I'm not accustomed to my new watch. I'm not used to my new watch. I'm not used to using it. I'm not used to telling the time with it. I'm not used to wearing it. It feels so uncomfortable. I'm still getting used to it. I can't get used to it. I'm not used to it yet. I'm trying to get used to it, but I just can't seem to get used to it. I'm not used to it yet, but hopefully I'll be used to it soon. Okay, are you used to this structure now? It takes some getting used to, but you'll get used to it sooner or later. Okay, I used to have problems understanding this structure, but I got used to it quickly. Most of my students get used to it quickly as well. Once they get used to hearing me talk about it, they get used to the structure quickly, and uh, and it's no problem. Okay? <laughs> okay, change the following sentences to used to. It takes people a long time to get accustomed to driving on the left side of the road. It takes people a long time to get used to driving on the left side of the road. Do you want to do you want to know a trick? Listeners here at home, I'm going I'm going to tell you a trick. Listen, listen closely. Are you ready? I'm going to tell you a trick. All you have to do is change the word accustomed to used. And the sentence is the same. It took me a long time to get accustomed to Spanish food. It took me a long time to get used to Spanish food. Well, there we go. It's a noun. There's no verb. But if I choose to use the verb to eat, then I have to use the gerund. It took me a long time to get used to eating Spanish food. It took me a long time to get used to cooking Spanish food. That's not true, though, because it didn't take me long at all to get used to it. It took me a long time to get accustomed to Spanish bureaucracy. That's true. It took me a long time to get used to Spanish bureaucracy. It took them months to get accustomed to my accent. It took them months to get used to my accent. Good. All right. Expression of the day. Yes, it is time for our expression of the day. Our expression of the day today is... To let sleeping dogs lie. Let sleeping dogs lie. So the dog is sleeping. He won't bite you because he's asleep. If he doesn't know, he can't hurt you. Let sleeping dogs lie. Listen, if they, if they don't know about the problem, we can solve it. And they're never going to find out. Look, if you tell him, if you bring it up, if you mention it, it could cause problems. Let's just let sleeping dogs lie. Don't bring it up. Let sleeping dogs lie. So don't, don't stimulate the person or thing that could, could potentially cause problems. Okay? It could be a problem. But if we don't say anything, if we, if we just stay cool, stay relaxed... We won't have a problem. Let let the dog lie. The dog is sleeping. Let the sleeping dogs lie. Don't disturb him. Don't wake him up. Okay? Avo- it's, use it to avoid problems. So when there's p- could potentially be a problem, you just want to say, let's be careful here. Let's let sleeping dogs lie. Okay? That's our expression of the day, to let sleeping dogs lie. Good. 
So, are you used to my structure yet? Or are you still getting used to it? I think you're used to it by now. Do you need, do you need more time to practice it, or are you used to it yet? You're already used to it? Okay. Good. Vocabulary of the day. All right. Yes, it's time now for our vocabulary of the day. The vocabulary of the day, starting with the word cumpl... Bueno, dos palabras en español y tres en inglés. Cumplir con. To comply with. To comply with. I have to comply with the rules. I have to comply with the laws. Hmm. We all have to comply with the laws. No exceptions. I can't ask for exceptions, and I can't expect to be treated differently because we all have to comply with the same laws and the same rules, right? To comply with the rules. Cumplir con. To comply with. Good. Meticuloso. Meticulous. Meticulous. He is, he is very, very meticulous when it comes to cleaning his house. He cleans every little area. He's very meticulous with his work. He's very meticulous with keeping his desk clean and organized. He's very meticulous. He pays attention to all the finest details. Okay. Quejarse de. ¿Cómo se dice eso? Quejarse de. To complain about. To complain about. Do you complain about the weather? No? Oh, good. Do you complain about English being too difficult? Don't complain. Because Spanish is tougher. Don't complain about it. Don't complain about English grammar. Think about how, how difficult Spanish grammar is. So don't complain about it. To complain about. Quejarse de. To complain complain about to complain about all right very good especias especias mm, like indian food it contains a lot of especias spices spices now be careful we don't say uh spices but spices spices Spicy sauces. Spicy. Picante. Spicy. It contains a lot of spices, so it's spicy. It tastes very spicy. Spicy. Do you like spicy food? I like spicy food. I went to Mexico once, and the food was very spicy. Muy picante. Very spicy. It was hot. It was spicy. Yes. I like spices, but I don't like... I don't I don't like them you know I don't I don't like trying to put them all I don't I don't put so much so many spices on my food that I'm torturing myself you know with, with it being too spicy but uh I do like spices and spicy food to a certain extent hasta cierto punto to a certain extent How do you say in English grúa para remolcar grúa tow truck tow truck tow truck he called the tow truck to tow our car away terrible the tow truck la grua the tow truck so does living in madrid take some getting used to to take some getting used to means to require a period of Becoming accustomed to something. Does, t does living in Madrid take some getting used to? No, living in Madrid doesn't take much. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it doesn't take much getting used to. But if you're going to move to Bangladesh, living in Bangladesh would take some getting used to. Absolutely. Living in Nigeria would take some getting used to. Living in Madrid? No. It doesn't take much getting used to. It takes a little bit. It takes some getting used to, but not much. Do new, do new phones take much getting used to? No, new phones don't take much getting used to. They're pretty easy to get used to. Does changing phone operators take much getting used to? No, they're pretty similar. They don't take much getting used to. Do new jobs take much getting used to? 
Yeah, new jobs take take quite a bit of getting used to. Quite quite a lot of getting used to. Does changing your diet take some getting used to? Yes. Changing my diet takes some getting used to. Mm. Used to. Okay. To require a period of adjustment. To become accustomed to something. To take some getting used to. So ask me if hosting a radio show took some getting used to. Kyle, did hosting a radio show take some getting used to? Yes. It took some getting used to. It took me a while. It took me a while to get used to hosting this radio show. It took me a while to get used to speaking here alone, into the microphone, teaching without a student. Well, sometimes with students, but usually teaching the grammar. It took some getting used to. The nerves, dealing with the nerves, it took some getting used to. But I'm, I am used to it now. I'm used to it, so I'm not getting used to it anymore because I already got used to it. I am used to it. I'm accustomed to it, and I'm familiar with it, and it's not a problem. I enjoy it. I enjoy recording radio shows because I got used to it, and I am used to it. Okay? So I'm going to leave you now. Thank you so much for listening. Tomorrow I'll be back with more. Tomorrow, class 40. Wow, already. 40 already coming up. So thank you so much for listening. And my name is Kyle. I'll be back tomorrow. So keep listening. Keep tuning in. We've got more great radio coming up right now here on Vaughn Radio. So I'll be back tomorrow with more, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.